here at T-Rex Arms, we've always been trying to improve every part of our production process, from the design, to the quality of the finished product, to the efficiency. And the CNC machines that we're using are pretty much the only thing that let us improve quality and efficiency at the same time. And uh, as we've moved more and more of our stuff over to this uh, higher precision process, uh, we've ended up needing more machines. So the most important part of this process is to build a table which is almost entirely steel framed except for these aluminum extrusions that is really rigid and really strong and it also needs to be perfectly square and perfectly level. That was quick, but we really need to figure out if this is in exactly the right place so that these two sidecar holes miss the steel. The shop bot kind of sits exactly halfway in between a do-it-yourself machine and a full production machine. You have to build a lot of it yourself, but it actually stands up to pretty rigorous production. So the next thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna square and level this table. It's extremely important that it actually be perfectly square and perfectly level, but we're off by just over an eighth. So I'm gonna give it a very precise nudge. Measuring from that outside corner to that outside corner, we are now square. So this side of the table is high. Uh, this corner actually needs to come up just a hair, Michael. Leveling the table is very important. We're using a laser level. You can't see it, but you get the idea. Perfect. Let's not do that on camera because I think it'll make us look incompetent. Yeah, so we're gonna come up and back and set it on the back. And then these wheels right here need to be gently set on top of these rails. There's some play in the rails if you have to jiggle them back and forth if it's not going, but we should be able to set it straight down directly on them. So, that's fine. All right, all four wheels on. Okay. Feels good. Yeah, let's start start tightening down this first first one here. The table is just a table. All the complicated electronics ride on the gantry, so the gantry comes almost entirely assembled. We still need to put the X motors on either side. All right. The earlier generations of ShopBot actually had a spring that pulled the whole motor assembly and the pinion gear up against the rack. And I uh, actually really uh, liked that. I kind of miss it. The way that this works, this is going to zero us on the X axis. And the way that this is going to work is detecting this steel bolt. It's basically where it's going to go. Right. And we need to bolt the spindle right here. I'll tighten this one down and we'll pivot off of it. All right. Okay. Well, that's not right either. Where are these going to come from? There we have three phase heavy duty power to the spindle. 24 volt DC to the cooling fan. Not too 
tight. Not too loose. So I'm not a major cable management sort of person. I know some people get really into it, but for this particular application, uh, it is extremely important. I want to make sure that there's no tension, no torsion, that vibration is not going to be causing an issue here. Power supply. So there's a bunch of stuff that needs to get plugged in. This is the brains of the device. Here's input for sensors, limit switches, emergency stops, spindle control, stuff like that. These are the four controllers for the four motors. There's two on the X axis, one on the Y axis, and one on the Z axis. If you get the uh, motors plugged in in the wrong order, strange stuff will happen. Next, here's the remote control pendant. How does this plug in here? Should get these little guys in the right order. All right, that's the spindle logic controller. It goes right here, C1 and F1. Great, now we can do some more cable management. Looks pretty good. All right, so cable management on the back, not too great, not too bad, but it's up off the ground. These three inputs here are gonna be for heavy duty power coming into the control box. And uh, we're absolutely gonna have an electrician do that. We're just not gonna film the electrician because maybe he doesn't wanna be filmed, but it's totally an electrician that's gonna do this hookup part. All right, so now that all the wiring is done, it's alive. And when we move it on the x-axis, it moves on the x-axis. When we move it on the y-axis, it moves on the y-axis. That means we plug the right wires into the right wires. Perfect. So far, it's been about half of the assembly time has been squaring the table. Uh, now we're going to square the gantry. Let's go to one, one. Dip down and just make a tiny, tiny hole. I think we should move it one thirty second. Technically, we need to move it just a hair less than one thirty second. Maybe two, two and a half hairs less than one thirty second. The super tiny amount that we're moving it. It's just that much. So it's all about making tiny, tiny tweaks and seeing what effect they have on the machine. Now that we've got the gantry square, it's just a matter of calibrating the table so the zero always ends up in exactly the same place. It always needs to come back to this spot right here that I've marked with this V-carve bit. Play the same position. And I think we've got it. So the only modification we've made to this machine after taking it out of the box is uh, slightly different cable management magnets on the remote pendant and some reference plates inside of the table. That's all that we really need to turn this thing into a very serious production machine. We need a whole bunch of mounting holes on the machine, so I'll let the machine drill those by itself. This whole pattern is very important. We put threaded inserts inside, which help us to bolt down our tooling. So as you can see, the ShopBot machines are very simple and pretty easy to put together. They're also incredibly affordable. This 4x8 machine, which is the top of their line, is twenty dollars to $25,000, which is less than the cost of a new car. And the, it's an incredibly 
functional and incredibly usable production machine. It's easy to program, but it can do a lot of different things. And as we're looking at a very uncertain uh, future, we don't even know what the rest of 2020 looks like, economically speaking. But we have such incredible tools at our disposal in this uncertain time. 3D printers are getting better and cheaper and are used for far more things these days. Um, CNC milling machines and metalworking machines are getting more affordable and easy to use and the software is getting more accessible. So as you're thinking about the future and the economic uncertainties, I want you to be encouraged that we actually have tremendous tools uh, to get out of a difficult economy. And I'd also like to encourage you to not just sit around and wait for the government to print enough money that we can somehow spend our way out of the hole, but be thinking of ways that we can start businesses, um, we can buy tools, we can develop products that will actually help us build a stronger economy. That's something that we at T-Rex want to do, and that's something that I would encourage all of you guys to be doing at home. Regardless of what you're doing now, you can use the time to be thinking about ways that you want to take advantages of some of these opportunities in the future.